Machias only had a few cattle in the 1770s. Very few had been brought here by ship from places such as Scarborough, Plymouth, Boston, or Nova Scotia. The few cattle that were here were used as oxen to skid logs to the rivers. A few were being used to breed to increase the population and some were producing small quantities of milk. In order for people to have meat here in this region, they had to go catch it. The Passamaquoddy's, Penobscot's, Micmac and Maliseet Indian tribes have been using the local fish and wildlife for food, clothing and other things since they first arrived here at Fundy Bay. Food from the ocean has been a very important resource. Soft shell clams are dug on the local mudflats. Codfish in large numbers are caught offshore and eels are caught as they enter the local rivers. The eels have provided a great food resource when we were unable to catch other things for meat. Our freshwater rivers produced Atlantic salmon, sea smelts, shad, and elwives. But all of these were seasonal each year. Many of these fish runs only lasted a month and they were dependent on the ocean tides. Salting, drying, and smoking fish were methods of preserving fish for longer periods of time. Shortly after the Europeans arrived in North America, fur trading began. Indians and Europeans gathered furs and hides from a variety of animals. Most of these animals also provided an important food source. Beaver and muskrat offered excellent meat and their furs were valuable for a wide variety of clothing items. The land here is rich with natural resources and our deer, moose, caribou, fish and fowl provide valuable food sources for the families who settled Machias. Fur from animals such as beaver, muskrats, mink, and otter became the fabric of our nation. Hats were made from the beaver and other fur bearers. The hides also made clothing, possible bags, and straps. We often think of furry hats, mittens, and coats, but the common tricorn hat was often made from beaver fur that was used very much like wool from our sheep. Haversacks and other bags were created from hides. Some coats and breeches, shoes, belts, and many other items were made from various leather hides. Indians were taking beaver by arrows, spear, nets, deadfalls, and guns. The Passamaquoddy taught us how to eat muskrats. These animals eat grass in marshes and have an amazing flavor. The Indians call them musquash. Catching fish and wildlife is not easy. It took a lot of time. Time that was needed for other things like cutting hay or sawing logs. Traps were created that would hunt even when nobody was there. This allowed people to go back about their work and hopefully catch food at the same time. Steel traps were traded across New England. On November 28, 1747, the province of Maine paid Jabez Bradbury 50 shillings each for three wolf traps that he 
made in his blacksmith shop. Around 1750, blacksmiths in, Mass in the Massachusetts region were producing large quantities of steel foothold traps. Sir William Johnson's writings on February 12, 1761 reveal that fox and beaver traps were commonly sold to Indians in New York. Three years later, he wrote that Indians would trade for 5,000 traps annually. Daniel Boone and other long hunters explored Kentucky in 1770, and they took steel traps with them. Trapping was very common pretty much anywhere there were people in North America. Fur and hides were very valuable and necessary. They were also lightweight and easy to transport great distances on foot or by horseback or in canoes or on ships. Trading posts in Massachusetts were called truck houses. In the 1770s, Machias had a truck house that was established to keep trade with the Indians open. It was critical to maintain fair trade with the local Indian tribes so that they would continue to fight the British alongside the American patriots. On October 2nd, 1777, the State of Massachusetts Bay Council authorized 700 and a half pounds of duck or goose shot to be sent to the truck house in Machias and that they were to pay the appraised price. On November 28th, 1777, Colonel John Allen wrote to the council again about local settlers exchanging liquor with the Indians for expensive furs. Colonel Allen was concerned that the Indians could be taken advantage of. It's also likely that some of Allen's motivation was to allow him or the local trading post master to maintain a strong relationship with the local tribes to ensure that they would continue to fight on the American side. Colonel Allen said that the new law in place since June 21, 1777, did not carry harsh enough penalties. He asked the council that the penalty for trading alcohol with the Indians be drastically increased. The resolution mandated that anyone trading alcohol with the Indians would serve 12 months in prison or pay a 50 pound fine. This resolve also permitted Indians to testify in these court cases. The language of the law read, no person or persons other than the trading post master be allowed to give, sell, truck, barter, or exchange with any Indian or Indians, any strong beer, cider, wine, rum, brandy, strong liquors or any other articles for clothing or any other thing whatsoever the Indians may have in possession. We find a note in Colonel John Allen's journal that reads, it is earnestly requested that the gentlemen of the militia to see the resolves of the general court put duly into execution now because an Indian yesterday, which was the Lord's day, had a moose skin taken from him for a case bottle of clove water, two thirds of it real water, and several skins of peltry and other things are missing. Colonel John Allen.
There are ledgers from the Machias truck house that have survived since the 1770s. Entries in those journals from 1777 through 1779 reveal some of the amounts of furs and hides traded on the Machias River. One entry from March of 1779. To account of furs, feathers, etc., 31 for sundry furs shipped in the schooner Morrisheet, 6th of August, 1778. 169 beaver skins weight 282 pounds. 245 martin skins, one fox skin, one mink skin, three fisher, six raccoon, 111 musquash, one box of beaver caster, in bulk 175 moose skins, 27 moose calf skins, three caribou skins, five deer skins, 26 seal skins. We know from the written ledgers that there were plenty of moose around Machias Bay. There were also deer. But what might be most interesting is the low numbers of caribou that were harvested around Machias in the 1770s.